the great unraveling exactly it started off with an article from a publication called coindesk and in the article from coindesk was a balance sheet or a version of the balance sheet of alameda research and alameda research was the company that sam owned before ftx it was a market making and inv an investment and research company and spf used that as his vehicle to make the investments in ftx it was almost like known as the holding company of ftx so to speak and in this balance sheet leak that alameda research that coindesk did around alameda research's balance sheet people started to notice that a few things the first thing i started to notice is that alameda research had a whole lot of ftt tokens on their balance sheet which is the token of the net of the, the native token of the ftx exchange the second thing is that people realized that the liabilities or the, sorry, the assets that were on this balance sheet were actually very small illiquid assets. And what they realized was that if you take the assets less the liabilities at a true value, you would actually have, you'd have Alameda bankrupt. And this started to do the rounds on Twitter. And after a few days, the round, you know how things go on Twitter, they get worse and there's more noise and as much as we hate that noise it's actually proven to be right more times than it's proven to be wrong it happened before all the other collapses and then the blow came out and the big blow was when cz the, the founder of binance exchange who previously who was the first investor in ftx and who exited his position in ftx over a year ago tweeted and he said as part of Binance's exit from FTX last year, Binance received roughly 2.1 billion US dollars in cash, BUSD and FTT. Due to recent revelations that have come to light, we decided to liquidate any remaining FTT on our books. We will try and do so in a way that minimizes market impact due to market conditions and limited liquidity. We expect it to take a few months to complete. Binance always encourages collaboration between industry players regarding any speculation as to whether this is a move against a competitor. The price was about $42 when this happened. And so that was another fundamental mistake because what she highlighted was she highlighted a certain price point. And that price point was $22, which was a random number. It was a, a random price point. When people started to dig further, what they realized was that $22 price point was the price point at which the assets and liabilities of the balance sheet remain solvent. And because they had used this FTT token as collateral to fund a whole lot of their deals as leverage, to fund a whole lot of their deals, if the price went under $22, then they would effectively be insolvent. And so for since that tweet, for a few days, FTT, FTX and Alameda were aggressively defending the price point of $22. There was a whole lot of selling of FTX token at $22 until eventually the price wall broke and everything started to unwind. And that brings us to where we are today, where eventually FTX yesterday, FTX Bahamas, which is the FTX International, which is the entity that services a majority of the international operations, excluding places like Japan and USA, which are highly regulated, declared or was declared bankrupt by the, by the regulators there and a liquidator was appointed. All right. This is a very sad story for me so I, I tweeted on three days or two days before this happened i tweeted and i said get your money off ftx this is financial advice that tweet is available for everyone to see on my twitter profile at crypto man run when i did that multiple people in the industry threatened me with legal suits people on the inside threatened me with legal suits saying that i'm causing fad fear uncertainty and doubt about the exchange that tweet got huge traction. I think it got close to 20,000 likes and retweets and, and whatever else, millions and millions of impressions. And I stood my ground because the information that I had at the time showed me that this exchange was probably insolvent. Some people managed to withdraw their money, but eventually they got to a point where they couldn't fund the withdrawals anymore. And that's where the point where Sam Bankman put up his hands and said, look, I'm sorry. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do right by the users first. And after I've done right by the users, but at that point, unfortunately, all the withdrawal the stuff because the exchange simply didn't have the assets or the liquidity to meet the user demands. And unfortunately, since that point, withdrawals have been stopped, barring a few things which happened along the way. One, certain addresses which were KYC in the Bahamas, where FTX International was based, were actually allowed to withdraw for a certain period of time. And speculation is that those were employees or people that were KYC in the Bahamas. And they were actually allowed to continue withdrawing and they did 
even as as long ago as long as short ago as 24 to 48 hours ago this was happening pull funds users etc left money unfortunately and lost money left money on the ftx exchange and where we are now is that unfortunately we've gone into chapter 11 and they've been declared bankrupt in 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 the bahamas which is very scary and the reason i say it's very scary is if you recall the famous mount gox incident where there was an exchange yeah. with a whole lot of bitcoin that went insolvent and that was eight years ago it was in 2014 it was eight years ago that exchange went insolvent and only now are the liquidators in japan starting to file the right paperwork for people to start getting some of their money back eight years later now i don't expect that this is going to take as long as that did but i do think that unfortunately now users who had money locked up in ftx are going to have to wait many years to get fractions on their money back and it seems that the liquidator that has been appointed in the united states is actually the same liquidator that worked on the enron case you've got a what they, i think they call him a pit bull or a bulldog of a liquidator i'm just trying to find it for us over here uh so there, he's been called a pit bull or a bulldog of a liquidator and he put in charge of actually resolving this and digging up his name is john j ray the third he's the lawyer that's been brought up to clean up on enron which is i think pretty appropriate and so unfortunately i think that users who have funds on ftx will see fractions of their of a fraction of their money back and they'll probably only see it in a very long period of time and it's very sad it's not only retail users that had money on the exchange yeah the effects of this are going to unwind over the next couple of months in crypto and so i think that you mentioned when we started this interview that this is a cold winter i fear that this winter is going to get a whole lot colder and i'll tell yeah. you why who put their money onto an exchange that went by the slogan of the safest and easiest place to buy crypto or the most regulated place to buy crypto something along those lines their money is now gone and they can't get their money out and i really wish i could have helped more people i tried my best to help more people get money out of there but i want to remind you that even ftx in the united states with all the regulators and all the licensing has declared for has declared chapter uh, chapter 11 bankruptcy and so i think we need to go back a few steps and say the reason why blockchain exists is because of decentralization because we want to disintermediate centralized entities and control our money ourselves and so one of the things that we always say in the industry is we say not your keys not your coin not your private keys not your coins and yeah. we always discourage people from leaving money on exchanges we always say if you want to trade on exchanges put your money on do your trade and take your money out and leave the exchange because if you look at all the failures not all but a lot of the failures that we've had in this space recently we've had a, we've had a, a cascade of failures celsius voyager blockfi three arrows capital ftx all, all of those are centralized entities the decentralized technology the technology that's built the bitcoin and ethereum that continues to work as planned bitcoin continues to mine blocks and to work uninterrupted ethereum continues to to run blocks and to work uninterrupted decentralized finance defi without any centralized custodians continues to work uninterrupted and so i think we need to break this industry up into two parts the one part is the ideological part and the part that brought us all here the part that brought us all into bitcoin and ethereum and that is people who believe in decentralization in not trusting centralized entities and in pe people who don't want to be affected by irresponsible government printing of money and government uh, interventions that's why this technology was built but in this industry you have centralized players and the centralized players seem to have systematic failure because of greed because of over leverage because of stuff like that and in terms of the conviction for the technology this is a massive setback for the industry Right. but it just shows more and more why this technology is required because what we want to do is we want to remove centralized players and start trading on decentralized peer-to-peer -peer players that are governed by smart contracts and not human intervention we want to build an infrastructure where there is a derivatives and a and an options and a futures infrastructure because in every market in the world the derivatives and the options markets are way bigger than the underlying market we want to bring in institutional money but we want institutional money to invest 
in the decentralized portions of this industry. Institutional money should buy Bitcoin because they want to hedge themselves against inflation or they want to hedge themselves against centralized money and collapses of economies. One of the biggest issues now with the dollar getting so strong and interest rates getting so high and all the US dollar denominated debt around the world is the collapse or the potential collapse of currencies, countries and economies. Now, when that happens, you want to have somewhere to run to. Traditionally, investors ran to gold and silver. You could also run to property. But now there's another option. That other option is Bitcoin and maybe you could even argue Ethereum. So we've provided investors with another option. The problem is that this option, we're getting centralized entities forming around this. I think that's the world that we're going to move to. And the more of these centralized failures that happen, the better. I'll give you a perfect example. Earlier this year, we had the collapse of Celsius. Celsius was a lending house. For all intents and purposes, Michelle would take her Bitcoin, deposit her Bitcoin on Celsius, and she would borrow against the Bitcoin, which is left as collateral on this thing. At the same time, the bank could do the same. So Celsius was the traditional bank. One party deposits and borrows against the deposit, and so does another party. Now, you can do that all without a centralized entity. You can do it all through a set of smart contracts where I send, using my crypto wallet, I send my deposit to a smart contract and I can withdraw against it using smart contracts with no human intervention. The second thing is, ask yourself a whole lot of questions about where the exchange is getting money from. And I know hindsight is perfect and everything else, but we should have asked more questions around how this 27-year-old afforded to buy 8% of Robinhood, to brand all these sports arenas, to, to buy and to donate millions of dollars to the Democrat party before the elections. We should have asked more questions. And I believe that if we had, the only answer that would have been logical is, hold on, there must be leverage in the system somewhere. Where is all this money coming from? And I think that there are very reputable institutions and I'm gonna cite like Coinbase, a very reputable, highly regulated institution. 